I'm an autistic person, autistic um, scholar activist, I guess you might say at the moment, with a, with a background in advocacy. I'm also co-director with Celia Kitzinger of the Open Justice Court of Protection Project, which um, is concerned with promoting um, open justice and, and public awareness, public understanding of the work of the Court of Protection and of mental capacity mental capacity law in general and its impact on disabled people. The autonomy is the right to, um, to make your own decisions and to have your um, wishes, preferences, values um, heard, respected and um, integrated in, into your life. Um, one of the reasons why I like the term and I, I prefer it to um, the one that maybe is more common it's 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 more common to talk about independence I guess um in relation to disabled people in general um obviously including autistic people um I think one of the problems with independence is that it has been taken and um the way that the way that a discourse of independence has been sort of used um and perhaps abused um rhetorically has been um, to suggest do everything for themselves um, with no or, or minimal human support. Um, and I guess certainly if, if one were to be cynical, one might suggest that that, that, is, um, that that's an approach that suits those that are concerned with balancing budgets, um, managing resources. If we think about what autonomy is um, in its kind of most basic form, it's, it's about the right to make your own decisions, to make your own choices, um, and to live the kind of life that you want to live. If you're a person who doesn't have um, support needs, in inverted commas, then your ability to live the kind of life that you want to live is, is kind of within your grasp. And it, it's possible for you to, um, to make that happen really on your own terms. Um, Whereas if you're a person who has support needs, who's identified as having support needs, then probably a lot of those, a lot of the things that you want or a lot of the access to activities that you want or to the world in general um, are not necessarily within your own grasp. And, and they might require a lot of fighting, battling for, um, in order to, to access those things. Being seen as a person who has support needs particularly what we might consider like um, what people often call high support needs mm. brings its own set of social stigmas as well so if you're a person maybe who doesn't use spoken language um, you tend to be seen as a person who doesn't have the skills or the cognitive ability to actually um, to exercise your own autonomy you're seen as a person who doesn't know what you want and if you're seen as a person who doesn't know what you want it's too easy for other people to come in and project what you want. It's amazing how closely what you're, what's suggested that you want might mirror what another person wants or what's convenient for them. I think some of the biggest hurdles um, to people with high support needs making, um, making decisions for themselves or having their wishes and their views and their values taken into consideration is actually the lack of imagination of the people around them um, to actually think about what needs to happen and what needs to be done and what can be done um, to enable a person to um, to express well to formulate their own views and then to express them when I'm meeting a new person it can be so overwhelming for me on a on a sensory level so trying to manage and make sense of their um, their tone of voice and their general vibe and having them in my space are so overwhelming that actually I'm so I'm so focused on those things that trying to make sense of um, of what I actually want in in that situation is kind of impossible because what I'm going to do often without thinking about it is I'm going to give the answer that I think the person wants and also it's about making sure the person knows what the options actually are.